Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Today is the 2nd of July 2019. It's a special communication from your interim government. This is a declaration of a 24 hour unilateral ceasefire from the Ambazonia Security Council, the ASC. It's starting midnight, 2nd of July 2019, to allow the visiting United States Congressional delegation safe and unfettered access to the sites of the crimes of the past two years. The Ambazonia Security Council, the ASC, and representatives of all other allied Ambazonia community self-defense groups fighting to end the occupation of our land by French neo-colonial regime in Cameroon after consultation with other community leaders in an extraordinary meeting do sign this declaration to commit to a 24-hour unilateral ceasefire to go into effect on midnight today, 2nd of July, 2019. We take this step as a good faith response to the fact-finding tour of the ongoing conflict between our self-defense forces and the forces of the Cameron regime, which has been undertaken by the United States Congresswoman Karen Bass, the chair of and leader of the Foreign Affairs and National Security Task Force of the Congressional Black Caucus and her team. This decision is to ensure unfettered access to Representative Bass's team as they gather the facts on the ground to pave the way for a fast end to the killings and eventual resolution of the roots of the conflict. We acknowledge the personal efforts of Representative Bass to get the United States Congress to pay attention to this war. Stating with her resolution 1111 of the 115th Congress and now her resolution 358 of the 116th Congress. It is our fervent belief that the Congressional Black Caucus can live up to its credo of the conscience of the Congress, as we saw it do in the battle against apartheid in South Africa. In taking this action, we also call others to action. We call on the Cameroon authorities to do the same and declare a 24 hour unilateral ceasefire as a sign of their interest in finding a peaceful resolution to this conflict. We call on the Cameroon government to allow humanitarian groups unlimited access to our territory as requested by the United States Sweden and other representatives of the United Nations Security Council at the past two briefings. We call on Representative Bass and her team to visit the sites where some of the most horrendous international crimes the world has seen in decades have taken place, including the site in Bambui, where Cameron forces assassinated U.S. missionary Charles Wesco. Menko Pinyin, where 29 youths were executed in broad daylight at a hotel by Cameroon soldiers, and to this day the regime is still to provide an explanation to the mourning families. In Kwakwa, where Mami Apia Sarah, a 96 year old, was burned alive in her bed when Cameroon soldiers burned down the village. In Belo, where Cameroon soldiers murdered and beheaded Chiaba Samuel, alias Sam Sawyer, and photographed themselves doing the beheading and put it on social media. In Mamfe, where Kenyan missionary Cosmos Omboto Ondari was summarily executed in front of his congregation by Cameroon soldiers. In Bali, where Cameroon soldiers executed 20 students, burned their bodies on one occasion and in another, the teacher of CPC Bali College, Nde Bless, was shot and killed in cold blood while his colleagues tried to help, were shot and severely injured without cause. In Batibo, where a family of 10 were summarily executed by Cameroon soldiers. In my eight Mankon in Bamenda, where 126 homes were burned to the ground by Cameroon soldiers. In Kumba, where the General Hospital was burned to the ground by Cameroon soldiers. In Bengui, where medical workers Nancy Azza and Joe Patisco were summarily executed. 
in their, on their way from their farm by Cameroon soldiers at the barricade, sparking a general protest by medical workers in the northern zone. In Moyoka, where five months old baby, Martha Ngum was shot point blank 10 times on the head while asleep in her parents' bedroom by Cameroon forces. In Yaoundé Central Prison, the principal prisons in Kondengi, where 236 civilians are being held incommunicado without access to lawyers or families under the pretense that they are being handled through the military court, which is a violation of international law by Cameroon, and the list continues. We call on Representative Bass and her team to support U.S. Senators Durbin, Cardin, Van Hollen and Kane's NDAA amendment to hold security assistance to Cameroon and to initiate a similar amendment to related House bills in order to pressure the Cameroon regime with the imminent removal of aid. We call on Representative Bass and her team to give voice to and strongly decry the malicious targeting of our civilian population, which is pushing hundreds of thousands into a state of homelessness and exile. We are painfully aware of the suffering of our people and know that shining the light on this situation is a necessary step to pointing us on a path to a peaceful end of the occupation. We also take this opportunity to highlight that we are ready and open to engage in honest, peaceful negotiation with Cameroon facilitating, facilitated by independent, impartial, non-partisan third parties, which most definitely excludes France and the other new colonial French regimes that are using the French new colonial currency, formerly known as the colonies Francais d'Afrique, the CFA franc. Our signature to this unilateral ceasefire declaration only commits us to non-offensive action during this 48-hour period. But we will hold to our positions and remain alert, aware Cameroon forces might try to exploit the ceasefire posture to ambush on our positions. We hope this unilateral ceasefire is seen for what it could be, the first step to our path to end this conflict and build a new sub-region based on the rule of international law. Sincerely, signed Daphne Yerima, Vice President, Federal Republic of Ambazonia. Thank you and God bless you.